American reacts to the greatest night in German history, Gott's the Iron Hand. Let's take a look. Willkommen. My name is Sean Huggins and this is React with Hugs. I want to see how he reacts when he thinks no one's watching. I can't help it if he's weird. He's American. He's going crazy with that work. Everybody reacts differently. I think he's weird, but that's me. He's American, you know. Welcome to React with Hugs. Let's take a look at today's comment of the day. So today's comment of the day comes from Starkilla3269, and they say, Do you guys eat your peanut butter directly from the jar with a spoon? Starkilla, thank you for the comment. And to answer it, I would say that most, most people do not do that, but I, however, do do that because I love peanut butter. Peanut butter might be my favorite food in the entire world. So sometimes I just can't wait to slap it on a sandwich or whatever. So I just get a spoon and I just eat it straight from the jar. It's a great source of tasty and easy calories when you are bulking. So that definitely came in handy when I was doing that. But anyways, enough about peanut butter. Unfortunately, I could talk about peanut butter all day, but I will spare you guys. Let's hop into today's reaction. All right, so today we're checking out Gotts of the Iron Hand, or otherwise known as Gotts von Berlichingen. This is by Extra History. I've never checked out any of their videos before, at least not that I know of, but a few days ago I reacted to a video about this guy, the Iron Hand, the greatest knight, maybe in human history, maybe the craziest life of anybody in human history. <laughs> Like, this guy is insane, but I watched a really quick video last time, and I found a little bit longer one here today, and I'm very excited about it because this guy is fascinating. So, let's waste no more time and find out some more about the man with the iron fist. Los Gates! Holy Roman Empire, 1504. Gotts von Berlischlingen is the youngest of a Swabian noble, inheriting nothing apart from a military education and a suit of armor. Given that, he'd taken one of the few routes available, joining the army as a knight of the Holy Roman Empire. Now 23, okay. he's already a veteran of two wars and is besieging a town Dang. on behalf of a Bavarian duke. He has a long career ahead of him, but then an incompetent artillery crew changes all that. Their cannon fires, or misfires, and rather than striking the enemy defenses, the shot plows into guts. Dang, when so it was friendly fire that lost his hand. Wow, I missed that in the first video. I thought the enemy hit him with a cannonball or something like that, but it was friendly fire. Dang. It struck him directly or drove his sword into his arm is disputed, but in an instant, Guts is staring at his severed right hand. Wow. In that moment, that Guts von Berlichingen, young knight of the empire, died, but a legend was born. <laughs> Guts of the Iron Hand. Ooh! Here we go. Do what you love, the old adage says, and you'll never work a day in your life. Well, big if true, but also a problem for Gotts. See, he loved to fight, and if he couldn't keep doing it, he didn't know how he'd support himself. Not only was oh, he man. his father's fifth son, but his fifth son from his third wife, meaning he'd Dang. inherit nothing. And the loss of his right hand threatened not only his prestige, but his long-term finances. Which is Dang. why when he went to a blacksmith, he asked the man to fashion him an iron hand. Though this was not as strange a request as it appears. Before the really? modern era, violence, disease, and accidents changed human bodies all the time. From heavy loads curving peasant spines, to missing fingers oh, from crap. agricultural mishaps Yo! or limb differences. And as far back as the ancient world, people of all classes used mobility aids like canes, corrective shoes, and even decorative or functional hand prosthetics. Roman general wow. Marcus Sergius, who like Gotts lost his hand, used an iron prosthesis to hold his shield. Dude! This is awesome! Now, while simple prosthetics and medical devices were widespread, the ones peasants used were crude wooden things fashioned by the people who used them, or made cheap by a blacksmith or carpenter. Think the classic peg leg. But Gotts, you see, no. was a noble, so he got a custom job. The resulting prosthetic was an iron hand that could be tied to his arm with hinged, lockable fingers that let him hold his sword. And oh, in a battle. Oh, okay. So I was wondering how they actually made it so that he could hold stuff with this. So the fingers could lock and unlock. Okay, so that's how they would have it to to grab stuff. Uh-huh. Out to aesthetics. It had Dude. fingernails etched into it, along what? with wrinkles on the knuckles. With his new hand, Gus wow. went back out into the world, determined to make his way doing what he loved best. Fighting. But not as part of the army. 
See, while Gots liked to fight, what he didn't like was taking orders. So using his personal charisma and the notoriety of his new metal fist, he raised a group of mercenaries and sold their swords to the highest bidder. Yet being a mercenary wasn't Gots' true passion. Sure, he liked fighting for money. I mean, who doesn't? But what he loved, like really loved, was feuding. Fighting those he developed a grudge against, beating <laughs> them, and taking their stuff. And for someone as belligerent as Gots, it actually wasn't enough to feud with individual people. No, nah, Gots declared feuds against whole cities. What? Though this too was not uncommon in the Holy Roman Empire. In fact, it was one of the ways minor nobles like Gots made money. Imagine it like a military version of a lawsuit. Uh-huh. So basically, he got a bunch of mercenary buddies around, and then he would, like, essentially declare war on a town and be like, all your stuff is mine now, or else we're going to come fight you. <laughs> Damn, that's kind of messed up. You declare a feud against some city, state your totally justified cause, then go <laughs> plunder them as compensation or kidnap an important person and demand ransom. Now, wow. technically, this became illegal in 1495, but it was still widely practiced. And while many feuded, none did so with as much relish as Gots of the Iron Hand. He'd shake his metal fist at anyone, anywhere, for practically any reason. For instance, in 1505... Dude, he this guy, this dude is the definition of on-site. <laughs> he is giving it to everybody. He made war with the city of Cologne, and dude. I'm not getting here, on behalf of a peasant who claimed the city's fathers hadn't paid him the prize money for a shooting contest. That what? conflict lasted two years and ended up expanding into five other interlocking feuds, the first of 15 he participated in during- Bro, this guy took on the city of Cologne. Dude, and then branched out into five other feuds. Yo, this guy, this is literally like a, a freaking video game, like a strategy video game. This guy is just like, I'm going to conquer everything. In his long this career. is crazy. So, is, yeah, is this Age of Empires? In addition to Cologne, his favorite targets included a bishop and the entire Swabian League. Yet it was the city of Nuremberg he hated most. After all, oh. it was their bumbling cannon crew that cost him his hand. In oh. fact, Gotts went so overboard in his feuding that the Emperor twice put him under Imperial ban, a punishment uh. that confined him to his own estate and gave anyone who sighted him outside of those borders the legal right to kill him. Dude, two times he got put in timeout? <laughs> you are not allowed to leave your room, young man. You're being a little rascal all over the place. Dang. Perhaps it was then that Gotts decided his hand needed an upgrade. After all, just looking at his first hand makes it clear how clumsy and insecure it would have been. Though it could hold a sword, it's difficult to imagine him actually fighting with one. Mm -hmm. So at some point, we don't actually know when, he commissioned a new one. A hand that was a wonder of Renaissance engineering. Designed like a suit of armor's gauntlet, it covered his forearm and was secured Whoa. by a buckled strap. Each finger was individually jointed in three places with a spring Whoa. locking system similar to handcuffs what? with the thumb having two joints. Dang, dude, that is wild. The palm could be moved up and down, what? and buttons released the locks and caused the fingers to spring open. Now, wow. all of this repositioning had to be done with Gotz's left hand, so the digits couldn't be moved quickly or easily, but it did allow him greater function. In addition That's to holding crazy. a sword, he could now write with a quill, or most importantly for a knight, handle the reins of his horse. Though opinion is divided over whether he used it independently of his armor or not. And thus rearmed, he paid his fine to lift wow. his first ban, continued his feuding, bought a castle, kidnapped a count, and got banned again. But despite <laughs> this marauding, Gus was developing another reputation as a protector of the peasantry. After all, many of oh. his feuds had started over defending. Dude, you get the peasants on your side, then they'll rise up for you. Peasant interests, mm -hmm. and he was known to be sympathetic to commoners, a sort of German Robin Hood. They loved his disregard wow. for authority and his famously salty language. At one point, <laughs> besieged by the Swabian League and asked to surrender by the enemy commander, he supposedly responded, He can lick my ass! <laughs> now, of course, Gotts didn't invent that phrase, but he did popularize it, and in his honor, it entered the German lexicon under the nickname the Swabian Salute. Yet that popularity nice. with the peasants had consequences. When a massive oh. uprising known as the German Peasants' War rocked the empire, Gotts looked out his window one morning to find 10,000 peasant rebels demanding that he be their general. Bro, 10,000! That's a huge army! That's how many orcs stormed Helm's Deep! Dude, that is a lot of people! But it's interesting that maybe he might not have wanted to actually participate in this war, but 
if 10,000 people show up at your house and they're like, hey, we need you to do this thing for us, you're probably going to have to do it for them. <laughs> Though he initially accepted, he snuck away after a month. At his trial, nice. Gotts claimed that he had been forced to take command and that he believed that by doing so, he'd minimize the looting common in peasant revolts. And though okay. cleared, his enemies in the Swabian League still imprisoned him. Dang, he's trying to play both sides now. Trying to be good with the peasants, trying to be good with the nobles. Mm. In 1530, he was finally allowed to go home and retire. Only for the emperor to drag him back into service a decade later in his 60s to fight against Bro. the Ottoman Empire and France. Gotts, who'd battled almost continually for four decades, finally died in 1562 at the age of 81 having gone blind even then <laughs> dude 81 81 in those times is like 170 nowadays <laughs> that is crazy he found time to dictate his autobiography one of the few nights to do so what? and it was that autobiography which made him a legend the playwright johann wolfgang oh, von wow Gerda. dude i gotta get my hands on this autobiography based a play on his memoirs, portraying Gotts as a dashing young freedom lover and model for German patriotism. Thus positioned, Gotts became a symbol of both nationalism and belligerent irreverence. An early uh -huh. German satirical magazine known for attacking everyone named itself after him. Several German military units took him as a mascot both during and after World War II. And even Mozart, a notorious fan of poop jokes by the uh -huh. way, wrote a parody song using his profane catchphrase. Bro, Mozart had a parody song? Yo, Mozart was the original Weird Al Yankovic. Oh my God, what a discovery. But he had another legacy. As an early adopter of functional prosthetics, he laid the groundwork for later doctors like Ambois Paris, that is really who crazy. developed his own mechanical hand, as well as the first above-the-knee artificial legs with locking knee joints. It's even been claimed Dang. that German doctors studied his iron hands when developing new prosthetics after World War I, though they mostly went with opening and closing hooks with swappable tool attachments. Regardless, both of Gotz's hands remain on display today. And yet what's most striking about him is how Gotz upends our expectations of disability in history. While we might think of mobility aids and prosthetics as a new invention that let people with injuries or limb differences continue living their lives, Gotz is an example of someone who not only lived with a prosthesis 500 Dude. years ago, but thrived doing it, who indeed made it his signature as he- Seriously, this guy is crazy badass. Defied emperors, led armies, struck fear into his enemies, and ruled, as they say, with an iron fist. <laughs> Once again, thanks so much. Okay, that video was a lot more in-depth than the last one that I watched on him. And I gotta say, my interest is still peaked right now. This guy is awesome. He's really fun to learn about. He really is like a freaking anime character come to life. Or like I said before, like a video game character come to life. Like he's literally just like, I'm just gonna go wherever I want, fight everybody start multiple different like mercenary armies and a peasant army and all this different stuff buy my own castle and i'm gonna do all of it with an iron fist <laughs> dude that is something else man i think i need to get a hold of this guy's autobiography that would be pretty interesting i think but i will turn the question over to you guys the experts what do you think is this guy a national treasure for germany a national hero a symbol for germany to look up to or the complete opposite i'm curious what you guys as germans think at any rate though that's all the time that i have for today thank you guys so much for being here and as always i'll see you guys tomorrow peace